Oh, hi, I'm Patty Behan. I'm the marketing coordinator here at Ranger, and I'm just getting ready for our next show, but I'm almost done with this, so how about I go show you how to use our watermark resist pad? Why don't you come with me to the art room? Ranger's watermark resist ink pad is such a versatile ink with multiple uses. It has been specially formulated to create a crisp resist and a true watermark. You can even emboss with it. I made this card using all of those techniques. Let me show you how. Okay, to start, you will need Ink Essentials Watermark Resist Ink Pad, a Big and Juicy Rainbow Pad in Spice, Ink Essentials Large Inky Roller, Ink Essentials White Gloss Paper, Super Fine Detail Embossing Powder in Black, the Ink Essentials Heated Craft Tool, the Ink Essentials Nonstick Craft Sheet, some stamps, and some cardstock. So let's get started. First, I'm going to show you how to create a resist using a Big and Juicy Rainbow Pad and the Watermark Resist Pad. What you do is ink your stamp with the Watermark Resist Pad. I'm using a Cornish Heritage Farm Scrap Lock Stamps. And since I'm using such a large stamp, I'm going to give you a great tip for getting a clear image. Once you ink the stamp, you place the paper glossy side down onto it and use our large inky roller to transfer the ink to the paper. We call this an inky roller tool, but it can also be referred to as a brayer. Okay, and that should be good. Once I have done that, you can actually set it aside to dry, or if you're an impatient crafter like myself, you can briefly heat it with the craft tool for a few seconds. You don't want to overheat it because the ink will soak into the paper rather than staying on top. Next I take the Big and Juicy Rainbow Pad and ink up my large inky roller like so. In order to get maximum coverage on the roller, start at the bottom edge of the pad and roll the brayer across and past the top edge and repeat until the brayer is fully covered with ink. Our inky rollers come in three different sizes small, medium, and large. And these green feet at the end are what we call the brakes because it stops the brayer from rolling freely. You should have them facing towards you when inking the roller and when the brayer is not in use, lay it down on the feet. Now you are going to ink over your stamped image using the same motion with the roller. Start off the page and continue off the page. Repeat until the entire piece of paper has an even coverage of ink. Another thing to remember is you need to ink the paper darker than what you want since glossy paper is porous and some of the ink will be absorbed over time. Once your paper is covered with ink, you take a dry cloth or paper towel and rub off the excess ink. Make sure to use a clean section of your cloth every so often to remove all the ink. See? It's like magic. The reason the watermark resist ink repels the dye ink is because the watermark resist ink is oil based, while the dye ink is water based, and oil and water don't mix. There you go. So on to the next use for the watermark resist pad. It can be used to make a watermark on dark colored papers. I'm again using the same stamp as before and I'm inking the stamp. Lay your paper on the stamp and brayer the back to transfer the ink. Make sure you get the edges and there you go, instant background. The image will get darker as it dries. Experiment with different papers for different results. Next, since the watermark resist ink pad stays wet for a bit, it's a great choice for embossing. You ink your stamp with the watermark resist pad and stamp onto your paper. I cut up the background that we made before. And since I am stamping words with fine lines, I'm going to use a super fine embossing powder for the best image. And you just pour it over top of the stamped image, pour off the excess, 
put the embossing powder back into the jar. And then emboss. And when you're embossing, remember to leave your heat tool in one spot. And then as you see it begin to melt, you can slowly move it further until it is finished. There you go, a nice crisp image. Once you have finished your stamping and embossing, glue all the layers together and you have your finished project. You have your watermark background, your resist technique, and then you're embossing with the watermark resisting pad. I just want to quickly show you a couple of other examples of how to use the watermark resist ink pad. You don't always have to start out with a white background when you're doing the resist technique. You can ink the glossy paper first with a light color dye ink, like here I used willow first, then I let it dry, I stamped over with the watermark resist pad, and I brayed a darker color over the top, I used red pepper. And then another really cool technique is to ink the background with a rainbow pad, stamp with watermark resist, let it dry, and ink over with black dye ink, just like this. I hope you'll give these techniques a try, and thanks for watching.